Good morning. Welcome to the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. Today, I am going to give a summary of the judgment which the court is issuing today in the appeal of Asda and Briley. I am Lady Arden, and I am the author of the lead judgment with which the other justices of the Supreme Court agree. The appellant is Asda Stores Limited, which I will call Asda. It's a major supermarket retailer in this country. The respondents, whom I will call the claimants, are employees of Asda. They are employed in its retail business. They work in Asdale's Asda's retail stores. They are predominantly women. The claimants bring equal pay claims in the proceedings in which this appeal is brought. They seek compensation because they say in the six years prior to their bringing their equal pay claims, starting in 2014, they received less pay than a valid comparator for work of equal value to that done by the comparator. Claimants who bring equal pay claims must, in general, overcome a number of hurdles. In particular, under the legislation governing equal pay, claimants have to choose a valid comparator. A comparator is a person employed by the same or an associated employer. The comparator must be employed either at the same establishment as the claimants or at another establishment. However, the claimants may choose a comparator employed at another establishment and thereby make what is called a cross-establishment comparison on certain conditions. In that situation, the comparator must be employed on common terms. And I will call this the common terms requirement. Parliament has not provided a definition of common terms, and so the courts have had to find the meaning intended by Parliament of this expression. I will come back to this when I come to a case called the North case, that is Dumfries and Galloway and North, to give it its long name, but I will call it the North case. The common terms requirement is found in the legislation, namely section 794C of the Equality Act 2010, which replaced the earlier provision, section one, subsection six of the Equal Pay Act 1970. The present equal pay claims are brought under both the 2010 Act and the 1970 Act, because the claims include periods when the earlier legislation was still in force. The claimants who are retail employees rely on a cross-establishment comparison with other employees employed by ASDA at its dis distribution depots, and I will call them the distribution employees. These employees are predominantly men. ASDA contends that they are not employed on common terms within the meaning of the legislation. The retail and distribution locations are separate from one another, and the employees at the different types of location, retail and distribution employees respectively, have different terms and conditions. The question whether the retail employees could use the distribution employees as, as comparators was tried by the tribunal as a preliminary issue. ASDA applied for the dismissal of the claimant's claim on the basis that this issue should be determined against the claimants. The claimants succeeded on this issue before the Employment Tribunal. ASDA unsuccessfully appealed to the Employment Appeal Tribunal, and it unsuccessfully appealed to the Court of Appeal, and it now appeals to this court. The essential question on this appeal is therefore whether the common terms requirement for the purposes of equal pay legislation was satisfied. As the judgment explains, 
The courts have interpreted the common terms requirement to mean firstly, that the terms and conditions of employment of the comparators must be broadly the same at both establishments, their own establishment and the claimant's establishment. And secondly, that if there are no employees at, of the comparators group at the claimant's establishment, which was the case here, and it is not clear on what terms they would be employed there, then the court or tribunal imply, applies what is known as the North hypothetical. And to do this, it considers whether the comparators group would have been employed on broadly similar terms to the terms on which they are employed at their own establishment, if they were to be employed on the same site as the claimants. So it's a hypothetical. And for this purpose, it is irrelevant that in fact they never would have been employed there, or if in fact it would not have been feasible to have a distribution depot at a retail store site. As Lady Hale explained in the North case, the purpose of the common terms requirement is simply to prevent a person from being treated as a comparator if uh, he is employed at a different location and has different terms and conditions for, let us say, geographical reasons. The North hypothetical provides the short and direct answer to this case. For the detailed reasons given in the judgment issued today, this court concludes that the claimants were entitled to succeed on the North hypothetical and accordingly holds that this appeal by ASDA should be dismissed. It is unnecessary to consider whether the claimants could succeed as the employment tribunal held on any other basis or on the basis of EU law, which imposes a test of single source where the common terms requirement is not met. For these reasons, as amplified in the judgment, the court dismisses as does appeal. The court goes on to explain how tribunals should deal with the common terms requirement in future. In this case, there was a substantial amount of evidence led in the employment tribunal in this case, which was simply not required. Moreover, the tribunal had performed a line-by-line -line comparison between the terms of the claimant and the terms of the comparators when this was the wrong exercise. They ought to have been considering whether there were common terms, that is, the same or substantially the same terms, between the distribution employees at their location and at the claimant's location. The judgment therefore provides guidance on future case management of issues raised by the common terms requirement involving this cross-establishment comparison. Finally, let me say a word about the implications of this judgment for the parties in these proceedings. This case, this court dismisses the appeal brought by ASDA this is clearly a very substantial case for ASDA. At the time of the hearing before the Employment Tribunal in June 2016, ASDA had around 630 retail stores and employed approximately 133,000 hourly paid retail employees. At the date of the agreed statement of facts and issues prepared for this appeal, there were some 35,000 claimants. However, the court's conclusion does not mean that those claimants have won their equal pay claims. At this stage, all the court has determined is that they can use the terms and conditions of employment enjoyed by the distribution employees as a valid comparison. The claimants must still show that they performed work of equal value. ASDA will still be able to rely on any defence open to it, including, if it is appropriate, the statutory defence that, di that the difference in pay was due to a genuine material factor, which was not itself discriminatory on grounds of sex. That brings me to the end of this summary. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a good day, and this court is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>